disobedient of Saul, Saul, King Saul, yeah, the disobedient of King Saul on Sunday, but today I want us to discuss, I want us to discuss a little bit of why did King Saul disobey, what made him to disobey, what excuse did he have to disobey, praise God, hallelujah. Because sometimes, you know, we have excuses in disobeying God. And we say, oh, because of this or because of that, we are disobeying. We have excuses to disobey and in disobeying. But we can understand that that is no excuse. Amen. If we read this, um, this very Matthew, you know, Jesus Christ, the book, um, the Pharisees, you know, when they come to, when they are interpreting the word of God in a wrong way, so when they are accusing the disciples of eating without um, without washing their hands, and for them it is so it is so evil. evil. Even when the Pharisees invited Jesus Christ, never come to England. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> so even when the Pharisees invited Jesus Christ to his, to his dinner, Jesus Christ just went there and started to eat <laughs> without washing his hands. I would say the, the, the guy was so upset. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I invite this bushman to come and eat? <laughs> Amen. Amen. So Jesus just gets there and they start to eat food with his side. He doesn't eat, he doesn't even wait. Yeah. And we say, look at him. Are you really a prophet of God? Why are you eating without your hand washed? Amen. Amen. So, you know, there are some excuses that the Pharisees, there are some excuses that the Pharisees uh, put in. He says, I will read from verse 11 again, and they said, then come, uh, then come to Jesus. I'm reading, I'm reading Matthew chapter 15 from verse 1. Then come to Jesus, Christ and Pharisees, which were of the Jerusalem, saying, Why do the disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But he answered and said unto them, 
Why do you also transgress the commandments of God by your tradition? For God commanded, say, Honor thy father and mother, and he that causes father or mother, let him die. How about that? Mm -hmm. That is, God said, anyone that disobeyed so my daughter. father and mother, he should be put to death. Let him die. He's dead. Amen. So, and then, verse 5 says, but, but you say, but you say, he says, whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, and honoreth not his father or his mother. He shall be, he shall be free. Thus, have you made the commandment of God of non effect by your tradition? So now, you know the teaching is: look, if you have, if you have something like, let's just let's just take for instance, if you have money, okay, and then your your parents said to you, said, okay, look, that money. That you're gonna use it to let's just say for example <clears throat> use it to buy a house or use it to um to help your brother or to help your sister and then you said to your parents look this money i'm gonna i'm using it for to do the work in the altar which is not bad and then they say i want to use it to work in the altar to use to give it to the church or to do the church or to do this and then you disobey your parents for, for the Pharisees mm. they said you are free you can disobey your parents on that ground mm. and Jesus is saying to them mm. tell me who are you going to obey is it the tradition of the elders or the commandment of God the first law, what God told us to do is obey your parents. If your parents say, bring this money or take this money, you have to obey that one. Mm -hmm. Not what you are going to uh, use the money to do. Maybe even if you want to use it to work for God. Mm -hmm. Because the parents is the God that you have here on earth that you can see. So they are the first. Because if you don't use that money to, to work for God, someone else is going to also, you know, give money to church or give money to the work of God. Mm -hmm. So the most priority is that you should, you know, obey your parents. So the reason why I bring this one out is because um, they have a reason. And they said, if you do this, you can disobey your parents. But Jesus said, no, no. The Bible says, obey honor your parents. If anybody disobey his parents, let him be put to death. But you are telling me, you are saying that, look, if, if I can uh, 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 give, to the, give to the church and disobey my parents, then I'm free. And Jesus said, no, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. And remember what Jesus said when he says, when you are bringing offering to the church, and then you remember that you have a brother or sister that you have problem with that you've not reconciled. Mm. Say so leave the offering there. Leave the offering there. The church, God will take care of the church. Mm. Leave the offering there. First of all, go and save your soul. Mm. Because if Jesus Christ come and then you give offering mm. and then your brother you have a dispute with your brother, yeah. then you go to hell. So what, what profit will you make? What profit am I? It was not going to profit in anything. To so bring your money and bring everything and then bring to the church and then you have got a brother or a sister. You hold a hostage. That, <laughs> yes, that you hold hostage. So you, it is hell, you know. That's why Jesus Christ said, you know what you're going to do? Seek first the kingdom of God and all its righteousness. Just obey the obedient. Obey first. The first thing that comes first. The first thing that comes first is obedient before every other thing. So Jesus Christ said to them, look, you are destroying the commandment of God by your tradition. So which one now? Which one now is better 
Okay, it says you got to keep the commandments of God, not your tradition. tradition. Amen. Amen. So you see, um, God, you know, the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom. So the kingdom of God is anything that will make you to disobey God, leave it. Anything, no matter whatever it is. Amen. You know, even if it is what your pastor told you, if I tell you something that will make you to disobey God, you, you, it's better you, you, you cut off your hand. Cut off your hand. You better you say no to your pastor. Mm -hmm. Say no to anyone that will make you to disobey God. You gotta say no to that person. You gotta say no to anyone that will make you to disobey your parents. You must say no to that person. Amen. Amen. So our God is a very good God. Our God is a faithful. Our God is a just. Our God is a mighty. Our God is a wonderful God. There is none like unto our God. Praise God. Praise Amen. God. Praise God. Amen. So now, Saul, King Saul, have an excuse to disobey God. He had an excuse to disobey God. And then you can see that his first excuse in the first um, um, uh, 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 um, in the first um, disobedience, this is in First Samuel chapter ten. From verse 1, first Samuel chapter 10, from verse 1. Yeah. You see, Samuel, when Samuel anoints Saul as king, mm -hmm. he tell him what to do. Samuel told Saul, Look, Saul, wait for me to come to Gilgal. I will tell you how to offer the sacrifice. I will offer the sacrifice myself. He said, Wait for me. I will come to Gilgal. Praise, praise God. He said, when I come, then I will offer the sacrifices. Then Samuel took a, a vial of oil and poured it upon his head, that's upon Saul's head, and kissed him and said, it is not because the Lord had anointed thee to be captain over his, over his inheritance. Verse 2, when thou art departed, from me today thou shalt um, thou shalt found two men by Rachel sepulchre in the border of in the border of ben Benjamin then in in Zalza, and they will say unto thee the ask which thou wantest to seek are found and lo thy father had left the care of the earth and Sorrowing for you, saying, What shall I do for my son? Then verse 3 said, Then shalt thou go on forward from there, and thou shalt come to the to the plain of Tiba, and there shall this is there shall thee meet three men. You're gonna meet three men and say, going up to God. To better one carrying three kids and another carrying three loaves of bread and another carrying a bottle of wine. And they will salute thee and give thee two loaves of bread, which thou shalt receive of them. And then it says again, verse 3 After that, they, thou shalt come to the hill of God where. Uh, 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 where is the garrisons? The garrisons of the Philistines. <laughs> and it shall come to pass when thou art come thither to uh, to the city, that then thou shall uh, uh, thou shall meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place with a pastry and um, and a tablet and a pipe and a harp before them and they shall prophesy and the spirit of the lord will come upon thee and thou shalt prophesy with them and and shall be turned into another man amen, amen. and then he says verse 7 says and it shall come and and let it be when these signs are come unto thee that thou do as occasion serve thee for God. Serve thee for God with this. 
Then verse 8, it says, when all these signs comes to you, you should do what? Just serve God. You should serve the living God as in any occasion, in any way God directs you, in any way God instructs you. Then verse 8, it says, then thou shalt go down uh, before me to Gilgal, and, and behold, I will come down unto thee. I will come down unto thee afterwards, and I will come down unto thee and offer burnt sacrifice and, and, to, um, and to sacrifice and to sacrifice of peace. Sacrifice of peace offering. It says, Seven days shalt thou tell till I come to thee and show thee what thou should do. My own said, Must wait. You must wait. He says, Seven days you must wait. I will come to you. I will come and I will show you what to do. Then, um, then Saul went ahead and offered that very sacrifice because Samuel delayed for seven days and did not come. Samuel, and you know, sometimes this thing is, sometimes when some people say that God have delayed, yeah? Mm -hmm. And then it is, it is a, sometimes a test, a test from God. Oh, Amen? Amen. Okay, let us read First Samuel chapter 13. From verse 5. 1 Samuel 13 from verse 5. 1 Samuel 13 from verse 5. Yes. Okay. If you see it, can you read it for me, please? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 1 uh, Samuel chapter 13, verse 5. Yes. And uh, the Philistines assembled to fight Israel. The Philistines assembled to fight Israel. Yes, there is a battle, there is a war. With the 3,000 chariots. And with, they have 3,000 chariots. And 6,000 chariots. And they have 6,000 chariots. And the soldiers are, num are numerous. And their soldiers are very, very vast. And the sand of the, of the seashore. Like, like the sand of the seashore. And they went up and camped at Mishamash, Misha east and, of Better Evan. Yes, they went up and, and camped at Mishamash, east of East of? East of Beth Even. East of Beth Even, yes. And when the men of Israel saw. And when the men of Israel saw them. That their situation was, was critical. That their situation was critical. And their army was hard pressed. And their army was hard pressed. They hide in caves. They hide. They went and hide like and cowards. Tickets. And they had in caves. Among the rocks. Amen. And, and in pits. And, and in centers. And everywhere. They went. They hide themselves. They they dispatched themselves, they went and hide because they, these soldiers, these people are coming with great soldiers, soldiers. so they run away, cowards. And some, some Hebrews even crossed Jordan. And some of them ran to, to the land of God and Gilead. Yes, some of them go into exile <laughs> without even the fight. <laughs> and so, so remain at Gilead. Yeah, and so, so remain at uh, Gilead. Gilead, yeah. And with all the truth with him, we are weak, with, weak, waking with fear. Okay, so Saul now stay at Gilead. Yeah. And he's full of fear. Yeah. And then what happened? Read down. Something happened. Verse 8. He yeah. waited for seven days. He waited for seven days. And the time said by Samuel. Yes. But Samuel did not come. Samuel did to not the, come. To, the, uh, to Gilead. To Gilead. To Giga, yeah, and so many began to scatter. So many, many people begin to scatter. All the soldiers of Saul begin to scatter. So he said, "Yeah, bring me the burnt offering." And then Saul said, "Now I'm not. I'm no longer gonna wait. I'm no longer gonna have patience. Yeah. Bring me the the, the, the offering, the yeah. salt offering, and, and the, the fellowship offering, and the fellowship offering." And so Saul offered up the burnt offering. And then Saul offered the burnt offering, just as he finished making the offering. And just as he finished making the offering, guess who arrived? Yeah, Samuel. Samuel arrived. Samuel arrived. And Saul went to greet him. And Saul went to greet him. What have you done? He asked Samuel. What have you done? Saul replied. Uh, 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 Samuel asked Saul. Yes. And so replied. And so replied. When I saw the men were scattering. When I saw the men were scattering, that's fear. Fear. 
and that you do not come and, at the time set. And that you did not come at the time set. And the Philistines were assembly at um, uh, Misha. Misha, Mich Michigan, yeah. Misha, and I thought now the, Philist the Philistines will come down against me at and, Giga. And I thought that the Philistines would come down against me at Giga. And I have not sought the Lord favor. And he said, he has been, you have not sought the Lord favor. So I felt come. I felt compelled, compelled to I felt offer. I felt compelled to offer, offering. to offer the burnt offering. And why did he feel compelled to offer the burnt offering? Read down. Fear. And so he said, You acted foolishly, Samuel mm -hmm. said. Yeah. You have not kept the command that the Lord your God gave you. Yes. If you had, you would have been established your kingdom over Israel for okay. all time. For all time. He said, Samuel said, You've acted foolishly. You did not obey. You did not keep the command that God gave to you. That if you have obeyed, that your kingdom should have established forever. forever. Mm. But because of that common fear, because if God wants to establish your kingdom forever, God has to test you mm. to make sure you are strong. Mm. So if God wants to uplift you, you're going to get a test. Amen? Amen? God cannot just give you upliftment mm. without testing you. Mm. Because God needs to God wanted, it's like the Israelites. You can see God choose them. That's the reason why God choose them. Mm. And you can see why God choose them. They still hold that tradition. Up to death. They still hold that command. They still hold that way up to today. Mm. Or look at other nations. Everybody has scattered and divided themselves into how many religion and everything. And Do you, do you know, know when I went to the hospital, guess yeah. who came there? A Jewish man came there with his book. Absolutely. Everyone on their phone. Yeah. I'm just studying his book. Oh, it is just shock. Yes. Me, huh? Every other person is on the internet and yeah. on the phone, but he was studying his book. He's studying his Bible. He's studying his um, um, is uh, 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 the word of God. Yeah. So, so we can see that Saul have a genuine excuse by men. If we are looking at it, you can say that Saul have a genuine excuse because the Philistines has come to fight him, mm. and. All his men are scattered, some of them hide in the rocks, mm -hmm. some of them hide in the cave, some of them have even crossed Jordan, some of them are just scattered. Mm -hmm. Okay? And then he is fearing that the Philistines will come over to fight him. And then when the Philistines come, he hasn't got any soldier. And for him to win that battle, he has to offer that sacrifice. So all this means excuse and excuse and excuse and excuse. Mm -hmm. Then the soldiers tell him, What are you doing, Saul? Offer this sacrifice so we can be able to win this people. Offer the sacrifice. Mm. And then Saul offered the sacrifice. If you read it down, yeah. it says it says that Saul obey the people. Mm. Saul obey what the people say Sorry. and then offer sacrifice. Praise God. Amen. So now he, he, he forsake the commandments of God. Oh. Say, hold on, wait until I come. Mm. Say, wait. Someone said, wait, when I come, I will offer the sacrifice. Mm. It's not meant for you to offer the sacrifice. Mm. Wait, when I come, I will offer the sacrifice. Mm. So you all can defeat the Philistines. Mm. So immediately he finishes offering the sacrifice. The right time. The right, then someone comes. So you know, one thing is, let us, let us never ever give up. Amen. Never ever stop believing. Never ever allow fear to grip you, no matter whatever. Even if, even if something, uh, 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 even if you are suffering like Job, he, he didn't give up. He said to God, "You better, you even better kill me. You better slay me. I will still serve you. I will still maintain my roots with you." So God gave Saul because Saul was anointed king and God gave him a trial to see whether he, he can be able to be the one that God will trust him. Even before that trial, last week we found out there was signs. Absolutely. To believe. And then that, all those signs mm. come to pass. It pass. Mm. come to pass. Mm. Then the, this very one now mm. is, and is one that he is thinking that oh, someone have delayed. So, one thing I want us to know as well here is that God cannot delay. Amen. Amen. It doesn't work with time. God cannot be late. It doesn't work with our time. 
our time may be like, our time may be like ten hours, mm. five hours, six hours. But mm. God doesn't work with our time. Because the Bible says a thousand years is like a day in the sight of God, and a day is like a thousand years in the sight of God. So Saul, King Saul, was given these excuses and saying, "But he didn't come for seven days. I waited you for seven days, he didn't come. So that's why I offered the sacrifice." But the the order is wait. don't offer the sacrifice. Wait. It's not in your place. It's not in your You don't need to do that. Wait. wait. And King Saul went and offered the sacrifice because he was listening to, to men. Hmm. You see, just as uh, Apostle Peter said, who shall we obey? Shall we obey you, the Pharisees, men, or shall we obey God? For he says, you, you, you know, work that one out for yourself. And Apostle Peter said, for us, we will obey the Almighty God. No matter whatever you do to us, if you want to kill us, if you want to destroy us, whatever you, kill, whatever you do to us, we are going to obey the Almighty God. Amen. 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 So this is the faith that God wants us to have. You know, some people have different excuses to smoke or to drink. Or to commit adultery, or to commit fornication, yeah. or to swear. Mm. They have different excuses. Before you know it, some people say, you not know, like the people that swear, they will tell you, oh, they are working in an environment where everybody swears. Swear. So they start swearing. Mm. Okay? Like we talk of God show you about smoking and drinking. Yeah. Now you are you are with the people that smoke and drink. Mm. And then you start to smoke it's and drink it, it, it's, it's from from habits. And then you, you will say, to God, oh, because I was in the midst of the people that are smoking and the midst of the people that are drinking, that's why I'm smoking, that's why I'm drinking. No way, man. I don't have it touch out. Yeah, simple. That died and yeah. Never go or back. like somebody, you know, some people they, they will give they will give you smoke. Mm. They will give you free. You know, if you want to smoke us, they get it free. That's the that's the that's the that's the cheapest thing people can somebody can give to you free. Mm. Someone you do not know, when you are crossing the road, you see that person with the packet of cigarettes. Oh, can you, can you give me what? He will just give you straight away. He yeah. give it to you straight away. The devil, devil like to share. The devil will like share. share but tell him to give you, the, the, tell him to preach to you, he will going to run away. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. So, it has no excuse. No excuse. And God cannot come late. Amen. Amen. If you if you, if you think of um, the, the the value of the dry bone, mm. you know you can see that even those soldiers that God did not come late mm. for them, God didn't come late. Mm. They died for so many years, so many years. And they thought it's over. They thought it's over. Their bones scatter everywhere in the uh, uh, in, in the wilderness, mm. and this is the soldiers that die. When the Ark of the Covenant was brought to the, to the camp, but God still remembered them. God came, resur uh, bring them all up, and then give them victory to the battle. Because all the other soldiers are dead and they are gone. Oh. And they never come but back. They never come, come back. back. <laughs> but this one, God told uh, Ezekiel, says, prophesy, prophesy, prophesy. Oh, and Ezekiel said, uh, God asked Ezekiel, can this bone, can they live? He says, God, this one, you are the one that know this one. You know this, I do not know. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So that's why so many, many, many times we're always going to trust God. Mm. You know, when you trust God, God, this is you. You understand. You know how this thing is going to work out. Mm. So when you trust out, trust God, God will know that you've trusted him. And then he will help you. That, that is what's Saul, King Saul should have done. Mm. King Saul should have trusted God and known that God is the one that every other thing that God said has come to pass. Mm. That this one, mm. that the Philistines, no matter whatever they say, mm. you should, if, uh, uh, King Saul should have said, mm. if I should die, let me die because of... So fear. But fear grip yeah. him. Fear grip him and then... Yeah. His soldiers said, oh, we are all going. And book, fear and the mighty, the Amen. Mm -hmm. His soldiers said, we are all going. We are all, everyone is scattered mm -hmm. to your tent. Oh, Israel, Israel. we are Israel. going. We are, and they said, okay, I'm going to offer this sacrifice, whether Samuel is here or not. Right. 
and then he go and take the sacrifice, which is not meant for him to offer. Mm. So the point I want to bring out here is that I'm having a feeling somebody will be somewhere watching him. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Mm. Praise God. Mm. So the the, the 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 points I want to bring out here is that there are many excuses to do bad things. Mm. There are many many excuses to do. So excuses to commit fornication, mm. excuses to commit adultery. Some people say, so "Oh, but it's nature. It's nature. God mm. created nature. It is nature." <laughs> That's a silly excuse yeah. people give. Oh, it is nature. God we, created we, we nature. This nature is grass. Yeah. Mm. Or somebody say, "Oh, it's a temptation. Oh, I'm tempted." Mm. Do you understand what I mean? I'm tempted, but the Bible says, "Thou shalt not commit adultery." Whether it is a nature whether it is a temptation or whether somebody whatever happened god have told you thou shalt not commit adultery you should run away from that temptation so so this is the, uh, uh, what the bible wants us to understand you must not give any excuse why you will sin against god or why you will disobey god you must not give any excuse why you will while you will disobey your parents because your parents is God. There's no, there's no single excuse. No excuse is accepted. There's no excuse. If, if we read the, the disobedience of uh, Samson, yeah? The disobedience of Samson is in Judges chapter 14. Do you want to read Judges chapter 14? Okay. Please. Judges chapter 14 from verse 1. I just, we're going to be quick. Once we come to his disobedience, we we'll stop it there. Chapter 14. Yeah, right? Judges chapter 14. Verse 1, okay. Uh, uh, no, Judges chapter 14, read verse. Okay, read from 1 to 4. Okay, Judges chapter 14. Yeah. Uh, Samuel went down to Tamar mm -hmm. and saw there was a young Philistine woman. Mm -hmm. When he returned... No, it's Samson. It's not sorry, Samson. Yeah. Samson just got my mind. Yeah. Samson went down to Tamar. Samson. Sorry, Samson again. Yeah. <laughs> Samson went down to Tamar. Yes. And saw the young Philistine woman. Yeah. When he returned, he said to his parents, yeah. father and mother, uh -huh. I have seen a Philistine woman yeah. in Tamar. Yeah. Now get her for me. Now get her because he's a strong man. He's yes. a very strong man. This Philistine woman is very beautiful. Yeah. And then... He saw this Philippian woman and says, yeah. come to his bed and says, get her for me. She is beautiful. Mm -hmm. she is, it's like, um, it's like um, uh, the, the fruit in the garden. Mm -hmm. It was so beautiful. <laughs> it was a fruit in the garden. It was yeah. so beautiful. God said, don't touch it. And Adam said, oh, this the, uh, Eve said, uh, devil deceived Eve. He said, look at this fruit. It's very, very beautiful. Yeah. Then yeah. read more. Okay, his father and mother replied. And his father and mother replied. Is there no acceptable woman among your relatives? Is there no acceptable woman among your relatives? Or among all our people? Or among all our people? Must she go to the uncircumcised Philistines to get a wife? Must you go to the uncircumcised Philistines to get a wife? But Sam Samson said, but Samson said to, his father, to his father, Get her for me. Get her for me. She's the right one for me. She's the right one for me. His parents did not know that this was from the Lord. Okay, he says, Samson says, we, we can stop it there so yeah. we can discuss it. Samson says, get her for me. Is the right one for me. Mm. She's beautiful. He said, he is going with what he sees. Right. He said, is the right one for me. Mm. But whereas, whereas his parents mm. know it, the tradition, That's a concept, yes, wow. if they know it, mm. the custom, mm. the tradition, that is in that Philistine. Philistine. Amen? Amen. So they, they, they see the, the wrong, mm. what is going to cost. Mm. That these Philistines. It's they, unbeliever. It's, yeah, these Philistines, they will use this Delilah mm. to get him. Mm -hmm. And they did it. Mm. If you read it down, the first thing is that when someone come and give them, um, give them a proverb, mm. Tell them what he did. No, when about, he about the honey, about the honey, about the honey on the on, on, on the strong. Yeah, yeah. So he told them about it, and they, there's no way they will get the answer. <laughs> then they go through the wife, wife, and then Samuel betrayed, wife. fall completely, mm -hmm. and then give them uh, the answer. Give her the answer, and she, 
give you to the Philistines. Mm. And the Philistines come and say, oh, this is the answer. This is the riddle. Mm. This is the answer of your riddle. So we know it. And then now, because as, you know, and though Samson is very strong, but he's a poor guy. He's a poor guy, mm. but he's strong. Mm. So he hasn't got money to provide all the garments and everything, 30 pieces of whatever, whatever that's your promise. Mm -hmm. And then he said, okay, then he went <laughs> wait for some Philistines on the grave <laughs> and killed 30 of them. Now he's he led them to murder. Yeah. He murdered 30 people in order to get take all their clothes and everything. Not to get, get married. And then go and get them to get married. <laughs> Sacrifice. Sacrifice. And then after that, it's the same Delilah that the, the Philistines used to know where his power is. <laughs> Without Delilah, will Samuel die? No. no. Samson. Yes. Samson. Yes. So now it has taken his, he made him to commit murder. And secondly, he take his life. So Samson, a strong man, didn't even last. He's a strong man and God made him to be strong to judge Israel. Right. But now because he disobeyed his parents, and go and get a fair woman. And his parents told him, don't do that. Don't do that. And then he said, get her for me because I'm strong. I'm, I'm a strong man. You gotta get her for me. This is it's, it's, it's the right one for me. It is good for me. You must get her for me. Praise God. Amen. So you can see, there is no excuse in disobeying God. There's no excuse in disobeying your parent, no matter whatsoever. There's no single excuse. All the people that have done it, Saul did it, and his kingdom was taken from him. God take his kingdom and give to whom? Give to David. Samuel did it. And what did God do? God take his power, and then he was killed. With the Philistines. Samson, yeah. Samson. Yeah. Samson was killed yeah. with the Philistines. Mm. Amen? Amen. So there are a lot of a lot of people that disobey the, the, the Israelites, even the Jews, there are many of them that went and marry foreign women, mm. which God told them, do not go. Mm. They disobeyed God mm. and they went and married those foreign women. What did God say? Punishment. Punishment. Evil come upon them. And they, they start to cry. And the God said, you know what you're going to do? Go and return back. back all, the women. all the women and the children. Hmm. Everything. Everything. Take it back. Yeah. Amen? Amen? And then you have to take it back. They have to, some of them that are brave, yeah. take the women back. Right. Take the, imagine hmm. that type imagine. of, imagine that Crying type of pain. pain. Hmm. Imagine that type of pain that, the children you love mm. and the and, and the wife you say that is good for you mm. and God said to you, no more, take it back. And you must obey God. Mm. Praise God. Amen. So you can see had they listened, they at the initial stage I said, Oh God do not want us to go this way. Mm. And then you will see them. They will they, uh, they will they will not have that sorrow, they will not have that pain. Praise God. Hallelujah. So this is a very, very food for thought for every one of us. No matter whatever the excuse may be. No matter whatever your excuse may be. It's a fair woman, or I love her, or she loved me, or I'm going to pro prosper with her, or she's nice, or whatever. Because, okay, let us understand something. This is something in the letter. Delilah is not a bad woman. She is not bad. Yeah. She has not even do anything wrong to Samson. But her custom, her people, people made her pressure her to kill Samson, to make Samson to die. Yeah. But for her, she is a very good yeah. woman. She never do anything wrong to Samson. But it is from her village, from her people, you know, the tradition, yeah. the custom, and then they push her, they put her under pressure. Mm. And she cannot, she fear her death. Mm. 
She fear her death. And the parents of Sansa know it's going to happen. The parents of Sansa know that, and then they know yeah. they foreknew that that is going to happen. They were going to they're going to use her to get something. And that's why they said to Sansa, "Don't go. We have seen what is happening ahead." And then it happened. Okay, another wonderful example is um, Esther, mm. Queen Esther. Mm. Yeah. And Molokai. Yeah, and Mordecai. Yeah. The same thing. The same thing. Um, uh, 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 Herman. Herman. Okay. Yeah. And Mordecai saw to Esther. Mm. Listen, let me tell you. If you don't do it, if you don't go and get this um, Herman, mm. get him killed. If you don't go and save the Jews, then what's going to happen? It says that both you. You yourself will be killed, killed. And, your families. and your family and everyone will be killed. Mm. And then the Jews now, um, Mordecai, make King Queen Esther mm. to go to the king, king when it is not hard time. time to, to, to see him. And then she now made the king to reverse yes. everything. everything. So you can see that it's a reason why. You need to listen. You need to listen. And look at this Esther. She respects the, the king. She never disobeyed the king. It's not even her turn to go. But because of the pressure from Mordecai, from his people, yeah. that pressure yeah. now made her to go. to go and say, if I die, I die. If I perish, I perish. I perish. My Amen. Amen. She said, "If I perish, I perish." I perish. perish. Amen. And then she go to the to the king, and then get that very uh, uh, that that very um, uh, um, victory. Uh, uh, victory for the for the children of Israel. So, you see, when when you are when when you are getting married, it's not only the wife. It's not only for you, or the husband. It's not only for you. It is for, for the, the whole village. For the whole village. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Because human being is the human beings are human being. Because that's a that's a way you put pressure and pressure and pressure and pressure. They'll fall for it. Then you fall for it. And you know, as a man, believe you me, a woman will always get you mm. whenever they want to get you. Oh yes. Oh yes. <laughs> How are you there? Hi. Ladies, hi. Ladies, hi. Amen. Amen. You see, you see what Delala was saying? You said you love me. But ah. you said you love me. Why are you hiding from me? Yeah, why are you hiding from me? But you said, look at how you hide it. And then, and then for this uh, Esther, yeah. she went and prepared a lovely banquet Wait. for the queen. And, and they <laughs> invited the enemy as well. And then, <laughs> the enemy. <laughs> and, and the enemy, when, he, when, when the enemy was going, he would say, Oh, he was in, he, he says he set a rope. <laughs> waiting for one for more like waiting for <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> and then he, he, he never know that Queen, Queen Esther have got yeah. a different a different a different idea. And then he go there and then, and then when he, 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 she start to present her case yeah. and you know this um uh, what's her name again? Um uh, 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 Herman. Herman, yeah. Then start to please me, stop, please me. And the king said, Are Oh you I in my own presence. <laughs> In my own presence, they are touching my, my wife. My, my wife. <laughs> That's how the man got. That's how the man And then what, what, and then what, I will see what I can say. Guy. You know, this, he will tell the king, mm. because he was following, he was following, what guy was very close. And, it's, and then he told the king, said, you see this man, he prepared a gallop, yeah. something, uh, uh, to, 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 to hang him, uh, 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 to hang Mordecai. Uh, huh? Okay, to which shall you go? Back to sender. Back to sender. You, yeah. Amen. No? Amen. Amen. So you can see. So this is this is the thing. The thing is, 
the person, the woman you want to marry, mm. she may be very good. Mm. But what is going to, you know, the pressure she's going to get from the family, mm. from the brothers, mm. from the sisters, from every from the friends, yeah. she, she cannot withstand it. Mm. Look at Queen, uh, 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 Queen Esther. Mm. The pressure she get Mon from Monica. Mordecai, that's what make her to go to the king, and that's what put Herman to the gallop. To the gallop, yeah. <laughs> exchange. Um, <laughs> exchange. <laughs> and then look at um, uh, 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 Delilah. Yeah. Very beautiful, mm. very handsome, very, 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 very beautiful, and very, very, very good hearted. Mm. But the pressure she gets right. from, her, from her people yeah. make her to kill someone that she loved. Mm. Mm. Amen. Amen. So that is why when God said no, or when your parents say no, don't go there. Amen. 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 Because the parents see what you don't see. Mm. And God know what you don't. Because God know the end from the beginning. Amen. You may be seeing it, you know the, the, the you may you know you may be seeing the initial movement. Say, yeah. oh this this person cannot do me wrong. Mm. This person is sweet. Is mm. she is very good. Lovely. She is lovely, mm. like Delilah. Yeah. But when the pressure comes to her, mm. choose life or death, mm. then she will say, instead of me to die, let this man die. Mm. Amen. Yeah. He will betray you. I mean, if you fall sick. Now, if you fall sick, she will leave you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. And when and when you fall sick, she will say, "Ah, is that what I'm going? I can't be pushing. I can't be pushing the push. I can't be pushing the push." Praise God! I'm telling you, we should. Every one of us here, we should learn how to be obedient, no matter what. There are many, many excuses for us to say no. There are many, many excuses for us to disobey. And those ex excuses are not good enough. The devil will provide a lot of excuses. Um, a devil will provide a lot. Look at the serpent telling yeah. Adam. He says, this fruit, this very uh, fruit of the garden is so beautiful. Yeah. It's so, did, did God say we shouldn't? Is it, God said, God, is it, God said we shouldn't touch it. He said, oh God, no. When you eat it, your eyes will be open. <laughs> devil put pressure, put pressure on Eve. And then Eve, look at this fruit here. It's beautiful. I think I should try it. And then she went and took it. And then she and you remember Eve wanted to obey God. But devil put pressure constantly. Constantly on Eve. And then Eve said, Let me go, give it a go. And then she it is and give to uh, give to a partner. Give to a partner. <laughs> And, and uh, why? But why is it that it must be men? Is it not women yeah. that will share the share the same? That will share, <laughs> share, share the same. Why is it that it is? I've not seen any women share the fruit. I have not listen. I've not seen any women that man deceived or something like that. It is only women Where? that will devil will use or the family will use or whatever we use to get the man. The, the Bible call it the weaker ones. The weaker ones. <laughs> Bro, Tony, are you, are you listening? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, praise God. <laughs> so you can see. So that is, that is why no, there's no way you will give an excuse that your excuse will not be enough. Will be any good, anything good. You can say, oh, this because of this, because she is beauty, mm. because she is soft spoken, because she come from a very nice family, mm. or because um, she loved me, mm. or because um, I love her, mm. or this and that, that mm. nothing will change that. I think God prefer you to even die than. I'm, I'm that, telling that, you, that, that I'm that telling you. What you don't know is what is gonna be tomorrow. 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 What tomorrow will bring mm. is what you don't know, mm. but God knows it. Amen. God knows what that tomorrow will bring, Amen. but you don't know. Amen. So that's when God sees that tomorrow coming, He said to you, "Don't go, Amen. don't go there." Then you, 
you will never ever see any, any reason why you will not go for it. There's no reason why you will not go for it. But God knows what is coming tomorrow. And God says to you, can go. This is the way. This is the one that you're going to go to. This is the one you're going to go and to. And if you disobey, he will leave you. If you disobey, God will leave you. Look at them. Um, uh, uh, um, look at this uh, Samson. Samson. Um, Samson. Yeah, Samson. Yeah. Samson disobeyed and his parents said, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. They first take his eyes. Wow, well, that's, that's a bad one. Right? Very, very bad one. Okay. Mm. So our God is a good God. Praise God. So, amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. So you see, we are, we are even on one. We are even on one. So what, what I want us to do is please, let us wait on God. Yeah? Amen. We must wait on God until when we get an answer from God. Um, we must not fear. We must not fear. We must believe God. Amen. Don't fear, but believe, believe God. God. Never ever have any mind. Never ever say that God has delayed. Because mm. God cannot delay. Mm. Remember the prophet. And those, uh, 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 those um, servants of God that died before Jesus Christ, hmm. they thought it is over. But when Jesus Christ came, when the Savior came, when Messiah that came, him. he died. And immediately he died, all they the all place. resurrected. Amen. Amen. The grave gave up. Hmm. They all resurrected. Imagine, who we think, who we ever For think, centuries. that these Thousands people, that these prophets of God, hmm. That have died, that God promised, that God promised is going to give them life, that's going to resurrect them. Who we ever think they have, their bone is decayed, they're in the, they're in the grave. Nobody will bring them out there. But when Jesus Christ died, the grave opened and they all come and they start to go and start, even they, they, they go to the city start, to go, go back to their job. To go, go back to Amen. They went back and continued the job. job. They went back and continued preaching. They went back and uh, continue to prophesy. Amen. 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 Preach to the people and they would say, Oh, I believe they must have gone to their village and to their, uh, yeah. to their neighbors and yes. everything. They said, I am the son of so, 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 I am prophet this, I am teacher this, I am rabbi this, I am the Pharisees, I am this and that. Where did you I we taught you, you but even your parent is gone. No, no, so time. where do you come from? Can <laughs> <laughs> imagine the shock? <laughs> it's gonna be a very, very big shock. Mm. But so it wasn't if it is not too late for them. Mm. How can it be too late, too late for, for us? us. My Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If it is not too late for Amen. those people that have died for centuries that are in the grave, everybody has forgotten them. Mm. Everybody has forgotten them, but something Jesus. happened. Jesus Christ came, died on the cross, Literally. and then they all came out. The promises of God fulfilled. fulfilled. That's why the Bible says that God has never failed. In any of his promises, right, he kept his promises, whether today or tomorrow or forever. Yeah. God kept his promises. promises. Praise God. Hallelujah. So let us take this back home today. God has never fell for once. God keep his, his promises. promises. So whether today or tomorrow or forever, God keep his eh, promises. promises. As simple as say this city. So do not say God have delayed because your time is not the time of God. Your calculation is not the calculation of God. Do not give any excuse to disobey God. Do not give any excuse to disobey your parents. You may have beautiful, genuine excuses, but the, the first command is obey. obey. Amen? Amen? And just as we know that obedience has to do with trust. Listen. You're going to listen, you're going to trust. Amen. You're going to listen, trust you're going to trust day. God, you're going to trust your parents that they get it right, and simple, and their life will be easy. Listen. Your life will be easy. Amen? Amen. Amen? So, let us understand this, that um, every disobedience has got a reason why somebody disobeyed. And let us know now that your reason 
of disobeying cannot save you. It's not an excuse. Because if you give any reason to disobey God, or if you give any reason to disobey your parents, mm -hmm. then that reason is not accepted. Amen. You will face the consequences of yeah. what sure. your, your action of your disobedience. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God is in this time. Praise, praise, praise God. Amen. 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 And then this is just number one, um, disobedience of Saul. Maybe next Friday we'll 